Okay. We want to express this vector as a linear combination of these, and then express this vector as a linear combination. And, and we don't want to do anything with this vector and this vector at the same time. It's different. So what I want to drop in the end here is a lot of people are just going to do something with matrices that's more or less related, but you're not going back to the system of simultaneous equations. And we always want to go back to the system of simultaneous equations to understand what we're doing. Okay. In the simultaneous equation, well, I'm just going to draw the hint the linear combination. The notation that you're accustomed to is C1 times 1, 3 plus C2 times negative 2, 1. Okay. Now, some people have written down some equations with different variables, you know, uh, Omicron 1 and Omicron 2. I think I saw that one. Uh, not, no, not really. Anyway. We don't want to breed variants in here, but um, okay. So it's usually C1 and C2, but there's nothing sacred about C1 and C2. You probably don't want to use X1 and X2 for these variables because that'll confuse things when you get over here, okay? But if you did use X1 and X2 here for this vector, that could work. Probably not a good idea because you don't want to confuse your constants with the notation you usually use for vectors, it can lead to confusion. I haven't seen where it has, but it could. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we're, you're going to probably have a, an aha or a oh, heck moment <laughs> um, when I show you this, and hopefully you will. Uh, if you don't, you might think about why you should. Okay. So here's a linear combination. So linear combination of oh, one three. And negative two one equal to odd negative four. Now my means of C one one three plus C two. That's negative two one equals negative four. Now you could write that out as two simultaneous equations and solve it, or you could recognize that this is simply then okay. So you want to think of things like this, right? It's a connection all the way from simultaneous equations up to, by the time we're done today, similarity transformations. I'm going to actually tell you what a similarity transformation is, and then I'm going to tell you why and why it's important. Okay, so anyhow, so here it is. Uh, so That's a solution. And I'd accept that. That's kind of what I was hoping to see, but knew that I might not. Okay. Now, some of you, you know, wrote out the system and solved the system. Uh, and some of you wrote out matrices. Okay. Uh, and tried to do something with matrices. You put those two things together, and you get this picture. Okay, 
Okay, well, uh, I'll say since the determinant of one negative two, three, one is not equal to zero, because if the determinant was equal to zero, you wouldn't be able to invert the matrix for many reasons, because you try to, you know, reduce the augmented matrix, this matrix, and the identity matrix, you get a row of zeros, and you don't get an inverse, okay? Uh, and, and many other connections, many other reasons. Okay, so how do you do X1, X2? For this one, this would be inverse matrix. Okay, so I can say that If this set is a basis of R2, then V1 equals five, negative four, V2 equals X1, X2. V1 with respect to this basis is just this. Then, of course, you, can, you know how to invert that and multiply the matrix. So, uh, I don't have to say any more about that. And I don't have to work through it. Yeah, I wouldn't mind working through it. I'd probably mess it up and then you get the laugh. Okay. Uh, gotta have a little humor. Um, but the point is, even if I got it right, it wouldn't add anything to what you already know and it wastes a lot of class time. So I'm not going to do that. And C2. Uh, the way I notated that, I'm going to change it. more sense of notation. And you might want to be able to look at that, okay? This factor expressed with respect to this basis is the C1, C2 that you got. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, now I 
We'll put this in the notation you see in the text. Let this be a transformation. So now we have a transformation from R2 to R2. We know the coordinates over here. Here's how we calculate the coordinates over here. You can do this. You did it when I just kind of laid it on you as a quiz. Is it last time? Thursday? Okay. Uh, get a little cramped here. Two, seven, make this three. X1, X2. Now, this transformation has a kernel or a null space. It's just a zero vector. Only the zero vector will map to the zero vector. Okay. And if you solve it and do the inverse matrix times the zero vector, uh, you're going to prove that. Okay. Uh, it's got a row space. Dimension two, the two rows here are linearly independent. It's got a column space with dimension two, and it's over here. Okay. Then you have a transpose matrix that maps it backwards and stuff. And we want to put all that stuff together because that's what we've been looking at. Okay, so eight equals two, seven, four, negative three is. A representation of T. Okay. This is relative to the standard basis. So we didn't leave myself room to write that. Okay. And they get that relative. I'm going to have to bring it back to that, that says relative to the standard basis of R2. And since the camera has chosen to zoom out. That's going to be hard to read if you're looking at it to your video. Okay, so it was zoomed in a little bit. That should, should be perfectly legible. I think the watermark is going to interfere. Okay. Okay, we understand all that. That's our context right now. Okay, well, my question then is. What is the matrix that represents the transformation relative to this matrix? Okay. Uh, That transformation, what's the matrix representation of this transformation with respect to this is B. Okay. Go draw your picture. 
So here we have our two. Here's our two. Okay. Not only that, but here's our two. And here's our two. There's a matrix that takes vectors in R2 represented with respect to the basis B and it puts them up here with respect to the standard basis. So down here, we're going to use basis B. Here and here. Up here, I can't leave myself room to write it, but better basis here from here. Well, if we've got a vector in the standard basis, this matrix here, sorry, this matrix here, uh, represents that vector with respect to this basis. Well, this, this matrix here multiplied by the standard basis, okay? Uh, by, by a vector in the standard basis, just like this matrix multiplied by five negative four gives us the vector part of the basis B. So I can say that, well, We've got the matrix, and we've got to call this matrix something, okay? So we're going to call this matrix P. We're going to say now that this is P inverse times five four. So this matrix here would be P. We could, I'm just looking for room to write this. I can say that P times the factor with respect to B equals the factor with respect to standard basis. That's what we said. Okay, so what we have here is P inverse. Okay. And what we have here, if we have a vector in the basis B, we multiply it by T to get the vector in the standard basis. Okay. Now, we know the matrix that connects the vector here to the vector here with respect to the standard basis. That's just this matrix. Okay, that's our A matrix. A acts on vectors in the standard basis. It takes them to vectors. Well, it takes them. The transform vectors according to the standard basis. <coughs> Excuse me. So here we have the matrix A. So now my question is, I'm going to let you think about it. Yeah. I'm going to call this matrix, this is according to your book notation, I'm going to call this matrix A prime. So what is the 
connection between the matrix A prime and the matrix A. If we start with a vector here and follow this path, what's our matrix product? So if A equals x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, x7, x8, x9, x10, x11, x12, x13, x14, x15, x16, x17, x18, x19, x20, x21, x22, x23, x24, x25, x26, x27, x28, x29, x30, x31, x32, x33, x34, x35, x36, x37, x38, x39, x40, x41, x42, x43, x44, x45, x46, x47, x48, x49, x50, x51, x52, x53, x54, x55, x56, x57, x58, x59, x60, x61, x62, x63, x64, x65, x66, x67, x68, x69, x70, x71, x72, x73, x74, x75, x76, x77, x78, x79, x80, x81, x82, x83, x84, x85, x86, x87, x88, x89, x90, x91, x92, x93, x94, x95, x96, x97, x98, x99, x100, x101, x102, x103, x104, x105, x106, x107, x108, x109, x110, x111, x112, x113, x114, x115, x116, x117, x118, x119, x120, x121, x122, x123, x124, x125, x126, x127, x128, x129, x130, x131, x132, x133, x134, x135, x136, x137, x138, x139, x140, x141, x142, x143, x144, x145, x146, x147, x148, x149, x150, x160, x170, 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 x170
So you really have the picture. Among other things, it's probably going to end up in the final exam. <laughs> this whole picture. Uh, but more importantly, it is if you understand this, then you're ready to do some pretty powerful things. If you can just imitate it, it's enough to get by, probably not enough days, of course. Okay. And maybe uh, still enough that you could go on to a more advanced course and actually use the stuff. Believe me, linear algebra uh, has profound applications in almost every field of science and engineering. It's as foundational as capitalism. You'll we'll appreciate that as you go along. Okay, so anyhow, end of motivational lecture. Here's what you want to understand, okay? Motivated or not, understand it the best you possibly can. It's worth it. Okay, so that's the answer to this question. Now, the answer to the second question was T of B, T of B with respect to the standard basis. So, under that for a minute. A pretty obvious answer. Of course, it's going to be obvious when I tell you. Let's see if you can find the obvious answer. Now, one of the big things in mathematics, engineering, everything, is being able to see the obvious, and you're not experts at doing that yet, but we're trying to build that expertise. So, let's see. Okay, we're, we're pretty good here. We have the idea. Well, you know, B with respect to the standard basis is up here, right? Because we multiply T by B with respect to this basis. So we're starting here. Started here. And here's B, and of course, it's with respect to the basis B. So up here is. Times B, B. And this is now with respect to the standard basis, because up here we've got the standard basis, right? Now, what do we do to this vector to get it over here? We multiply it by the matrix A. We transform it. We do the transformation. A represents the transformation. A is the matrix form of the transformation. So we're going to multiply this by A. So the answer, which is fairly obvious when you see it, but make sure you understand these steps. This is going to be A Times B with respect to the standard basis. Which is, well, this is a vector with respect to the standard basis, so you multiply it by A. Okay? So there it is in terms of the original representation with respect to the basis B. Well, see if we can answer the third question. Now we're unfocused, but we aren't zoomed back. So the camera's kind of got its own idea of what it ought to do. Wish I could fix the focus. Still not. Okay, there we've got it. Yeah, I'm recording this. Now everybody knows what I have to suffer through. Okay. I'll keep an eye on that thing. Okay, well, now, where are we? Okay. We want to get T of B with respect to B. Okay, well, that's over here. Thank you. 
So we want T of VB with respect to B. We usually would use two subscripts there, but I'm going to do that. Okay. Now, where's this thing? This A T times V B, which is A times V standard, right? Well, V standard is up here, right? And I could write that as just a new reminder. Now, you can be proactive when you're listening to this, and you can, you know, write out something like this, okay? Just to remind yourself of what this is. So when we do A times V standard, we get this, which is A times V standard. But of course, we want to write this in terms of our original vector VV, which is then A times T V standard. Well, now you want to get this vector, right? How do we get this vector from here? We multiply by the universe. So that this vector is the inverse. Now, back here again. We noted that this is V standard just to keep track. We have this question, and then we want to answer this. Okay, how do we get T of V with respect to V? Well, T V with respect to V is okay. And a little confusion on the subscripts. You know, read your book. Once you understand this, what you read in the book ought to be pretty obvious. Okay? And if it is, of course, keep digging until it is. And at least, of course, answer the problems right, which you can do without understanding much of anything. <laughs> so you want to dig for deeper understanding. Uh, yeah, being able to get the right answers is enough to get by, of course. Deeper understanding necessary for making a top grade. Okay, so multiply by P inverse, and we get this. Now be sure you understand all this in terms of this example and everything else that we've done. But as I said, this applies to any transformation. As long as you have a matrix P that's invertible, which means that that works as long as you have an isomorphism. Remember, isomorphisms are one to one onto mapping. The two spaces have to have identical dimension and several other properties of isomorphisms. Isomorphism means same form. So we're taking the space R2, in this case, represented with respect to some basis, transforming the standard basis. Then applying the transformation that we know according to the standard basis. And then cut down here. Okay. Uh, okay. Again, do whatever it takes to understand that as well as you can. You'll be much to your advantage as we move on. Now, one other thing I'll say is. Um, this doesn't even have to be the standard basis like that. Like this could be another basis. You could have a basis B and a basis B prime. We know how to get the P matrix. At least you did a few weeks ago. Okay. 
you just put the matrix with the columns here and augment it with the other matrix with its columns, right? You put the basis vectors in the columns here, you put the basis vectors in the columns here, and then <coughs> you reduce till this one is the identity, and now you have the P matrix that takes one basis to another, and not just the standard basis. I wanted to understand in terms of the standard basis, because that's what used the example. Make sure you generalize that to the, uh, to the general basis. The operation is just as simple. Okay. Except if you're trying to invert your P matrix uh, or, or find your P matrix, you, well, if you have the standard basis, then one of those two matrices that you're using in the augmented matrix is going to be the identity. Okay. Um, I don't think you'll have too much trouble with that. If you understand this, it's not hard to understand. If you really understand it. So. Um, okay. Well, that's a big deal, believe it or not. Um, so in, in general, then we can say that the if you have a transformation from V to W. Represented with respect to basis B. Then to represent T with respect to different bases, B prime. Represented by matrix A with respect to B. Is matrix A prime equals P inverse A T. Is a transition to be prime to B. Can you see how to do that? I'm going to let you kind of take that out. Might have to review a little bit in really reception. Um, as I said, you know, you just put one basis, you know, one matrix, no basis in the other, and then you reduce the other to the matrix. Um, I think about why that works. I don't want to. Get into that complex of an explanation because I've already strained your brain as, as much as I uh, think is advisable for one day. Okay. Um, and the picture.
Okay. And <laughs> see what I just did? I could blame it on you, and I'm not gonna. Just my right key here. P inverse here and P here because it's like it feels like an inverse or something. I, don't know. I know this quite well and have for well over half a century. Probably don't know it as well as I did uh, a few years ago, but I, I, I know it quite well. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I still want it right wrong. It's, it's one of those things that. To go this way or that way, and I always want to go the wrong way. So I've always got to stop and remind myself and think. You probably have similar experience. You know, like, which one's my left hand? <laughs> well, we usually get that straight. Uh, but uh, yeah, very, very similar. Okay. Okay, the whole board wasn't visible. You know, the labeling of bases B and B prime might not have been visible. So there it is. Okay, so A equals P and versus AP. Again, remember the order because P is the first thing you do over here. The last thing you do is P inverse. Well, the first thing you do to your vector is you multiply it by the last vector in the, in the row, right? Okay, last vector in the expression. And the last thing you do is you multiply it by the first step. Okay. And the last thing you do is P inverse. First thing you do is P, so there it is. Done. I'm going to similar. Okay. Now, let's just prove something here. Although I stated this, it doesn't really require proof. But what we want to prove If a prime equals p inverse a p, then p a prime equals p times p inverse a p, which equals just a p, right? Officially, I'd want to write I times A P, but that's equal to A P. In here, I'd want to write A times I, but that's A. Just emphasizing the P and P inverse multiply out to the identity matrix. Okay, so. So 
A equals P inverse A prime P inverse. Here we could say that A prime is similar to A by matrix P. A similar to A prime by matrix P inverse. Because of course you want to say that A equals the inverse of some matrix times A prime times that matrix. Well, that matrix in this case would be your P, P inverse matrix. And of course, P has to be invertible. Okay. Um, okay. Now, you can similarly prove, and it's pretty simple. A similar to B and B similar to C, then A similar to C. It's just a matter of pretty much writing it out. You want to look at that proof. You want to understand why that's so. And it's pretty straightforward. And they're, they're, uh, yeah. So basically, you, you have this reflexive property of similarity. If one matrix is similar to the other, the other is similar to it. Now, the way I stated it, that's kind of implicit, but you can really want to make a formal. And you have this transitive property, okay? A similar to B, B similar to C, then A similar to C. And there's another property of each of these. Very quickly, you want to understand the uh, second, second problem from the quiz. This vector is cosine theta sine theta. This goes back to the definition of sine and cosine on a unit circle. Here's your unit circle. Here's your cosine. Here's the sine. Okay. So that if you want to rotate all the vectors in the plane. Right here is what happens one your basis vectors, standard basis. Okay. That's what happens to the vector one zero. If I wanted to find the vector up here of length one, also rotated kind of clockwise by angle theta. What would its components be? Well, you can verify the components of the negative sine theta, cosine theta, for various reasons. First of all, what's the dot product of these vectors? Clearly zero. You get negative sine cosine plus cosine sine. That adds up to zero. So these two vectors are perpendicular. Another way to see it is this thing has a slope of sine theta over cosine theta, rise over run. This has to have the negative reciprocal slope. Okay. And there are two 
receptors with the negative reciprocal slope. You could have uh, sine theta, negative cosine theta down here. But if you're rotating in this direction and you want to see what happens to the standard basis vector, this is what, uh, so if these are your standard basis vectors, these are the vectors in your new basis. And now you can write down a transformation that rotates everything in the plane. Now, I'm not going to go through the details of that. There are more details a lot of time. But I wanted to remind you of that. So make sure you really understand that picture. Because rotations are going to become important. They're, they're among the most important transformations. Rotations and, and, and uh, uh, stretches and shears. That's pretty much it. Now, that's in the last section of the chapter, which we're going to defer because we need to get into eigenvalues and eigenvectors next time. Okay.